Fresh is a word that spans generations, and I like that word. That word is so suitable for hip hop because hip hop has to stay fresh. And so fresh to me means that which is most hip for the, and current to whatever is going on at the moment. Fresh is, is something that always has to be new and always has to be potent. There's two, what I would consider two movements that I've seen in hip hop. Hip hop as is known today and the birth of it, I give it to the Bronx and Cool Herc and them guys, you know. But there was a, a form of it like the first time I, any variation, there was a club in Harlem. Guys would come in and ask the DJ, could they, you know, spruce up the crowd. The DJ would give them permission to do something and they would say, oh, I've been a hip, been a hip. My first bins I got in 73, so this must have been 70s, 69, 70. When I first opened the store, rappers could not afford to buy the stuff. Some of them had to lend clothes through, I think, like, some of them had their own money, like, the fat boys had their own money, but I don't want to call out names, but the majority of them used to have to wait till I take care of the, the gangsters that was coming through. Even Andre Harrell, he was a friend of mine, he would tell you when he first started out that he used to borrow office from me. Artists have personalities, right? And their lyrics speak from their personalities. When you take an artist like Eric B. and Rakim and you get that street spiritual thing going on, I like that. Somebody who's more street and more gangster, say like, Coogee rapping them. I like that. What I like most about it, everything in the artist was the variation in personalities. I would not favor any personality over another because I know personality is how they respond to society. In terms of um, who I would like or who I did like dressing the most, whoever it is that was more in, in touch with who they are. And um, it's a lot of them, you know. KRS-One, Jungle Brothers took it to another place. All the guys who had different personalities. I love, I love getting into personality. When you talk in terms of artists and the hip hop generation, you have to include Mike Tyson in there. Him punching was like rapping, you know? It was fun dressing him, you know, because he represented a certain element of hip hop. Public Enemy, of course. Public Enemy generated a whole class of style guys who were even politically conscious. So we had this variation, you know? So I would have to categorize that those are the main guys who um, uh, took what I was doing down different avenues and allowed me to be able to play with different things. Well, you know, the brands ran me out of business. You know, I had to go underground. I went underground in 1992. I'm walking down Madison Avenue when I'm underground, I'm still working on Madison Avenue. And this is in 1998 and I see all the rappers assembled on the stoop doing a great day in Harlem. And this is around the corner from where my store was. And all this is taking place right there. And I'm standing there looking at, looking at all the rappers assembled. I saw Russell, I saw Eric B and Rock Kim, I saw uh, Fair Fight Freddy. I'm seeing all these rappers. And I'm seeing the game how it developed. And I'm saying, wow, look at what this is today. And that vision never left me. To see where it had matured, and then while at the same time rap was going up, and the forces that be were trying to drive me down. So that memory always stuck in my mind. I would never forget that. I say, I saw them when they start. And I was built to start all over anyway. I say, I wasn't going, I was not going to let this get away from me. Uh, and a lot of people don't know who Dapper Dan is and why he's important to you. Right. You know, can you explain that? When they didn't allow us to design for them or, you know, they looked at us crazy walking in their stores, he said, you know what, I'm going to make everybody come to me. I got everybody a, a great advantage over young people coming up looking at the music yeah. today. They're standing on the mountain when it comes to music. But myself, I'm standing away from the mountain and I can see all the levels of the mountain. Because um, I done passed through a lot of generations of different music spans. I mean, you, you have what people call negative rap and positive rap. 
But um, all of it is essential because those who are telling the story of the street are a reflection of what's happening. Either what they see or what they've been a part of. And to me, that's important. If all the rappers rap positive, then what would we know about the street? It's like the daily news. You're going to see negative things in the news and positive things in the news, but it's all essential to what life is about and what's going on. My only concerns about the future is that the powers that be in the music industry don't kill these messages. Don't determine you should say this or you should say that. You know, we have a lot of people or in prominent positions speaking out against hip hop in one era, you know, in one way or another and pushing some guys up and pushing some guys down, but the whole story needs to be told. That's why I'm always grateful today that I had the, uh, the health and stamina to continue until things like this happen, you know, where people can go back and find out the story. So I'm happy to be here to tell the story. You know? Shout out, boom, boom. My name is Dr. Dan, no. Shout out.